Okay, this week we are doing our first Q&A and we are doing it right now. Welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. This week, considering the high level of engagement that I had in the videos at the beginning of the series on the air-to-air -air missiles, I think it's necessary to do a short Q&A to address some of the elements that have been brought to my attention by you guys. Okay, we start with Nighthawk2174 who left a very interesting comment. He's saying, the C model Amram has many different blocks from 3 to 7 and number and block 8 became the uh, D model. Of note, the C5 got a boost only motor, meaning that in the AB variants you had a 4 seconds boost with a calculated 4700 pounds of thrust with a sustain of 1200 pounds for 4 seconds, while the C5 got a boost only with 3700 pounds for 8 seconds. After this, the C7 was made with more range, which many believe is due to a more powerful, longer burning motor, although numbers on it are not available publicly. I really like this kind of comments. I believe they're very, very useful because they add something to the discussion. They add some interesting points to the general discussion. So well done. Thank you very much. Stephen Andrews says, I believe the Link 16 extends to the weapons and targeting range in this scenario. And he actually links a national interest article talking about the uh, Amram version D. There's been a bit of debate about Link 16 and the Amram, and uh, so it works basically like this. The D version has a uh, two-way data link so the weapon can relay back information to the launcher or any other platform that is Link 16 compatible. But you have to understand that Link 16 is like saying Wi-Fi in the sense that it is just, let's say, a very long-range Wi-Fi that a platform, a military platform, can use to communicate in a secure way over a few hundred miles. This means that while the Amran can receive commands by any Link 16 enabled platform, the platform, the guiding platform, must be capable of providing the correct information to the Amram, uh, which is basically the position of the target. The Link 16 would be used for the mid course guidance, so the information that missile needs, since he already knows his position and speed, is the position of the target. Any platform that wants to guide the Amram, can be the launcher, can be a platform different from the launcher, needs to have the capacity of providing the target uh, information to the missile. If a ship is too far and can't really have a quality track on the target, then it can't guide the missile. Uh, if if a plane is on MCON and is going totally passive, probably without an infrared search and track, it can't provide any kind of information about the target to the missile mid-course. So this is the logic. Then you have to consider that the F-22 has its own, let's say, bespoke data link which is a stealth data link, a secure data link, a low probability of intercept and jamming data link, mostly thanks to the fact that it is a directional data link. The Link 16 is omnidirectional. A Link 16 platform emits at 360 degrees. The F-22 is actually capable of transmitting directionally toward others F-22. Similar capacity is also uh, implemented in the F-35. Bharat Sharma says, I wasn't aware of a GPS receiver in the newer version, uh, the C8 and uh, the D. So, the one thing that is actually important to understand is why there is a GPS receiver in the Amram. The, the point is that the missile needs to know where it is. It needs to know uh, because if it receives any form of mid-course guidance, 
the kind of data that it receives are the target position, so the onboard electronic can guide the missile toward that position. The better way of knowing where you are is actually having a GPS receiver. The previous versions use a ring laser gyro, which required to integrate the motion equations, required to receive initial positions from the plane, which made the everything a bit more complicated. So the purpose of the GPS receiver is mainly to simplify and make more precise, more accurate the guidance. These are the questions that I wanted to address in this video. Some other questions will also inspire me uh, to make the few previous videos that you have all, uh, already seen. And uh, yes, thank you very much. Let's keep this dialogue going. It is great. That's exactly uh, the reason why I have this channel. So uh, after this Q&A, we are going to restart the series of big videos. We still have a lot of uh, subjects to cover in the first series about air-to-air -air missiles. We haven't spoken about semi-active radar homing yet. We haven't spoken about infrared homing yet, and I'm sure you will like it because it is really, really, really an incredible story. And we haven't spoken about the new generation of missiles, the competitors of the classic Amrams and Sidewinders. So please stay tuned for the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.